Percy has had many accents on the Northwestern Railway. One in particular involved a disagreeable barge named Bulstrode. After the incident, he was left on a beach so children could play on him all day. He didn't much care for it. One morning, Percy was passing by the beach where Bulstrode laid. Poor barge. Percy had never forgiven himself for the incident. I wish there was something I could do to help. He didn't deserve to be mourned on the beach. It was my fault. Percy didn't realize his driver was listening. A few months later, Percy was at the docks. He had just entered the quay when he heard an unfamiliar voice. Never turn your back on that engine. Or you'll be in trouble before you can say I'm sinking. Percy stopped and looked around. Oh, hello, er, um, Bellstrode. Ah, oh, yes. What are you doing back in the water? To help work. Sir? Driver told me your feelings, and I believe Bullstrode has learned his lesson. Aye, aye, Captain. We could always use more hands on deck. The docks keeps very busy. Quite right, but I'll be keeping a close eye on you. Yes, sir. If you work hard, I will allow you to stay. But if not, the children will be happy to have their playground back. Bulstrode shuddered at the thought. Bulstrode worked hard, but he still grumbled, though he kept it to a minimum. Cranky and Salty were very pleased with his help. It was soon two days before Christmas, and the docks were very busy. It's miserable loading and unloading this numbing wind. I can't feel my hook. Aye, it is getting a bit nippy. Try being in the water. By the time I get to the mainland, I'll be an iceberg. Ah, I've never seen it so cold. It was getting colder, and the temperature was rapidly dropping, so fast that the railway was closed early due to the rails freezing over. All traffic was halted, engines were stopped at stations and yards, and that night, freezing rain pounded the island. The engines were miserable. In the morning, the engines were able to return to the sheds. The rain has positively ruined my paintwork. There are more pressing matters than paintwork, James. The cold weather has frozen the machinery at the power station. There have been reports of many power outages across the island. That means many families will freeze. That would be true, Henry, but there is a shipment of coal and generators from the mainland coming by sea this morning. Thank goodness for that. It's Christmas Eve. Driver says there's to be another freeze tonight. Precisely, you must deliver the supplies when it arrives. If not, it will be a very cold Christmas. It's like delivering presents. Like Santa Claus. Don't be silly, Percy. Santa doesn't deliver coal to all the good girls and boys. Meanwhile, there was trouble. Shiver me axles! The ocean be frozen over! No ships can come in or out! And indeed, Cranky was right. Bolstro was outside of the docks, loaded with the important supplies. One of his crew gazed upon the frozen sea. The ice is too thick to sail through. Oh no, I'm not spending Christmas out here in this miserable ocean. Bolstrode charged forward, driving his bow into the ice. The heavy weight from his load broke the ice, splitting it into pieces. The ice split and cracked as Bolstrode charged through. It was a long, cold job. This is nothing. This ice is weak compared to me. Meanwhile, Percy had arrived at the docks with Sir Topham Hatt. 
They stared anxiously out to sea. The fat controller shook his head. The ice is too thick. It's impossible for a ship to break through. But what about the important supplies? We'll just have to think of something else, Percy. Cranky! Have another look! <sighs> what do you see? All I see is sea. Wait a minute. I see something. It, it, it's, it, it's Bulstrode! Coming into port, cold, tired, but unbeaten, was Bulstrode. Well done, Bulstrode. That kind of determination is just what we need at the docks. Thank you, sir. Well done, Bulstrode. You're a hero. It's been long overdue. Welcome to the dockyard crew, me hearty. <laughs> the supplies were quickly unloaded. Donald delivered the generators to the power station, and Percy delivered the coal all across the island. And that night, every home on the island was as warm as toast. Bullstrode was at the docks. It was very quiet. It was Christmas Day, and the docks were closed. But to Bullstrode's surprise, Percy arrived. What are you doing here? You'll see. Percy had brought some of the villagers that wanted to say thank you. They unloaded a small tree, presents, and threw a big party in Bullstrode's honor. It was a splendid time. I hope this makes up for the past, Percy said hopefully. Bullstrode said nothing. He wasn't the kind of barge to give a smile or a kind word. But Percy thought he could see a small grin creep on Bullstrode's face. <laughs>